What's up, guys? And thanks for tuning back into the Crypto Stackers live stream. I'll turn that music down just a notch. That should be a little bit better. All right, we're going to get into some trade setups this evening, as usual. Uh, but before we do, we'll probably recap the S&P 500's action for the day, keep track of what's happening in this economy and how the legacy markets are reacting to it. Um, so far, it just seems like a risk-off rotation and correction. Nothing too crazy yet. We actually discussed this last yesterday evening. We talked about um, someone in the chat mentioned a 13 DeMarc indicator top signal on the S&P 500. We kind of talked about it coming down a little bit. We'll jump into the chart. But guys, <clears throat> pretty big pretty big day for NFTs. Um, if you're, uh, in case you missed it, the 45th president of the United States of America dropped his NFT collection today. Um, and believe it or not, I grabbed some. I grabbed some. And not, this isn't political for me. I put out an entire Put out an entire thread uh, on Twitter as to why I actually think these are going to pump to some degree once they're all minted out. There's uh, 45,000 total. Still got a mint about uh, 10,000, almost, uh, yeah, a little over 10,000 more before there are minted out. And uh, yeah, I do think that they will mint out and I do think that they will uh, probably give, if I had to guess, maybe a 2x or more, depending on how much Donald Trump um, shills them, essentially. If he just doesn't shill them at all, it'll probably dwindle down and, you know, rug, slow rug, just like any other NFT project. Uh, but if he shills them and tries to actually push them and, and increase the floor price, then I think that they'll very easily give um, a, a two to three X. And the reason I think that is because at 45,000, pull up Solana real quick. Um, at 45000 the mint price is $99 each. We'll just round it to $100. Uh, that's a $4.5 million market cap, right? So once they're fully minted out and, you know, that's, you know, they minted 35000 today. Uh, these are probably going to mint out by the end of the week, I would expect. And over, probably at some point tomorrow, um, if this pace continues. That's a $4.5 million market cap. If we go and look at any other like like moderately like mid-size, mid-cap NFT projects, $4.5 million is nothing. Sappy Seals is 12 and a half million. Um, v Friends is 60 million market cap. So if Donald Trump's NFT collection went to the size of V Friends, you're looking at what what is that, a, a 15X? Pretty much, yeah, over 15x. Um, I mean, if he markets them, they're going to pump. If he doesn't market them, they'll probably just dwindle down. But it's going to be really interesting to see. Again, it's not political for me. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm here for the art. Clearly, I'm, I'm here for the art. No, I'm, I'm here to, to try to make money off of these, um, to be quite honest. So um, take that with a grain of salt not telling anybody to, to ape into um, not not telling anybody to ape into Donald Trump's NFTs but it was certainly an interesting uh, collection drop all right let's get into some trade setups Solana uh, actually looking really really nice today the s p 500 dropped by let's get the official number on the day 2.49 percent and solana held strong did not budge did not budge that's really impressive i would have absolutely thought that solana would have come back down for our setup here um, I'm still in my Solana long. I've got my stop loss set in profit, but it's at like $13.79. I thought it was around like four, uh, $14, but it's at like $13.79. And we actually didn't come down to hit it. So uh, as long as Solana doesn't come down to stop me out, I'm going to be long in this. Uh, I do think it'll come down to stop me out, and I would have expected it to already. And our support level here is around $13.30. Uh, in fact, let's find our... Our, uh, our long margin pressure levels for Solana here. Uh, 1368 is a key level, but we clearly have, whoops, we clearly have some support here at 13, 
30. So let's see if we can sync that up with a margin pressure level. I'll zoom out to the, the four hour. And let's see if the short levels will suffice. And we'll go over the S&P 500 here in just a moment. Um, honestly, it was I, I don't think it was as brutal of it is, but it's two and a half percent's bad, but I, I think people may be overreacting. 1258 is an interesting level and that resistance, we keep getting this resistance at $4.15. So that's kind of our range high. We want to be careful to make sure this doesn't ding off of $4.15 and then push back down. Uh, let's get rid of that level there. Get rid of that, that, and that. Interestingly, struggling to find what level this is actually, but it's a, it's a very clear uh, structural level here. So I don't mind buying just a structural level. I don't need a margin pressure level um, in order to buy. It's just, it would give me some extra confidence. Uh, let's get rid of those. And then from our most recent high to our swing low. Yeah, we're well below all of those. Let's bring this guy down to our most recent resistance. And there's the level. We found it. We appear to have found it. Risk reward band here. That's where our support's coming in. We fall down. Yeah, we got more support at like 1358. Anywhere in this this ascending triangle, uptrend line, I think is a good entry point for our ascending triangle. This can start moving back upwards. Of course, if our invalidation is if we catch resistance on the other side and we start moving outside of this pattern, we start moving outside of this pattern, that's not good. And uh, we start to be a little bit more biased to the downside. Right now, I'm fine being biased to the upside. Fine being, being biased to the upside. It's kind of darker in here than than usual. At least get a little bit of light in here. Okay. If you enjoyed the live stream, please do drop a like. It's greatly appreciated. It helps the channel grow. Let me know if you have any requests for charts this evening. That's Solana. I'm going to copy our exact same trade setup from yesterday evening um, over here. Solana. This is... Uh, our Thursday night trade setups. I'll scroll down so that you guys can can see that Solana long ascending triangle on the uptrend, thirteen dollars to thirteen dollars and fifty cents. Could maybe even front run that a little bit, uh, but wouldn't, wouldn't get too too excited um, given the the trend of the the S P five hundred. D X Y is actually down. Um, that's, I mean, that's overall good news. If it, honestly, it, it seems, and I could be wrong. Maybe we're going to go into a full, full out crash here. Maybe, maybe this is the big crash everybody's been warning about. Um, but it almost feels like the S and P 500 may have overreacted a little bit today. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Let's see how we have some, some strong, we're, we're in a kind of a support region here. It's a region we've, we've seen support in, in the past. Let's throw in our risk reward levels and our margin pressure levels on the S&P 500. Um, there's been a set of margin pressure levels that have been holding up fairly decently from these lows over here. There's our resistance coming in, resistance, and our short margin pressure levels from our high. We get pretty decent confluence there. 3850. I wouldn't want to uh wouldn't want to fade 3850 support personally. We've seen this come in as support in the past. Um, and just keep in mind, yes, like inflation is still high, but it is starting to trend downwards. Um but let's let's actually overlay here. Let's actually overlay DXY on a um, new price scale. So this is DXY. I'll make it green. Make that green. I'll get rid of our margin pressure levels just for right now. And here we are. Here we are. All right. Um, 
DXY. DXY has come down quite a lot. Guys. So remember, last time last time we came all the way down to the bottom uh, over in this 3600 region, DXY was all the way up at 108. So for, for DXY, for us to really come back down here, and again, it's not going to be perfectly correlated, but you got to ask yourself the question is, do you, do you think DXY can come back down, back up to these similar levels uh, that we were at when the S&P 500 was down over here after we've already come in and held support? Now, for us to be pushed down to new lows, do you think that the, the DXY is going to make new highs, right? Because if it doesn't make new highs, then we've got some divergence. But the S&P 500 does make new lows. Then we've got some divergence between DXY and the S&P 500. We actually, you know, have already seen DXY, right, really, really falling down here. And S&P 500 coming up a bit. But over here, we're, we're just kind of, you know, keeling over despite the fact that, that DXY has continued to drop recently. I know that got a little bit messy, but... Um, DXY is telling a little bit of a different story here than the S&P 500. Yes, we're spiking up a little bit, if we, but if we look at this price action since the 21st of November, we're down, you know, I don't know what the, if the percentage is on that scale, but we're down from uh, 107 to, to 104, and the S&P 500 is also down. So we would actually have expected the S&P 500 to be up a bit. So we'll see we'll see um definitely an interesting thing to to take a peek at dxy doesn't rule everything but for a while all it was the only chart anybody wanted to look at uh, bonds holding up quite well consolidating here long-term bonds now short-term bonds pulling back just a little bit uh, the two years sitting at 4.24 us 10 years sitting at 3.48 starting to come down a little bit bond markets calling to some degree calling the feds bluff a little bit saying uh hey we don't we, we think you're gonna have to cut sooner than what you plan on or sooner than what you're telling us uh nice little bounce back in the crypto market after hours i personally took the long at 1260 that filled for ethereum so we'll go into ethereum next um Great job on perp last night. Is perp pumping? No, it still hasn't gotten through our level, but I appreciate it anyways. Still appreciate it. Uh, so I did get into uh, Ethereum at 1260. We did talk about that level. We're up a little bit. Um, we'll slide that stop loss up. And on 25X leverage, we're up 21%. So, you know, just just bouncing a little bit on our 1260 level still in the phantom trade though it has come down closer to my stop loss still long on solana still up 45 percent um bnb i'm short on bnb still um that one's up 30 percent on 9x leverage so pretty decent there um all trades currently are in profit which is a welcome sight a welcome sight it's always good to have you know a couple of trades in profit keep the keep the account moving in the correct direction let's uh find our short and long margin pressure levels for ethereum here and guys we've been hammering home these levels every single day um they really have not changed we had our 1340 resistance i chickened out and shorting it or i put my stop loss in too tight um, because I was a little bit of a chicken due to that 7.1 CPI print would have thought that could have pushed us up through and created a bit of a narrative here, but I guess the market's not ready for it yet, especially the way the S&P 500 reacted. Um, we pumped and then we spun right back around. Now, remember when CPI came in hot over here, we got the exact opposite. We ripped to the downside and then we started an uptrend. Now, what we're seeing with the CPI print that came in uh, low, soft, we'd have expected a pump to the upside, but what we saw was a, a brief pump and uh, now so far a pullback. We'll see if we start another downtrend here or not. Um, still at this point in time is you know, a bit unclear. There we go. That's our level. 
1258 to 1260 that's our support level guys this has been the bottom of our range this is why i uh bought at 1260 and if we look at the candle today um, the low was 1259.27 can't get much better than that we'll see if this actually pops back up uh, and goes up to retest 1340 but i've said uh, quite a bit here that the, our most likely scenario is would probably be chop within this range. Uh, if you tune into this live stream, you know, I've, re I've reiterated that thought, um, multiple, multiple times Now we are back in this range between two extraordinary, like we're between a rock and a hard place two extraordinarily strong, uh, support and resistance levels. And it makes sense that we would probably spend some time chopping in it now. The S and P 500 crashes off further tomorrow. Look, it's probably going to wash a lot out with it, and I could see it really weighing heavy on crypto. Uh, but again, S and P 500, we're approaching that support around 3850. We'll see. We'll see. Um, definitely don't want to be somebody who's you know in denial uh, about the S and P 500 crashing, but I'm also way less um, you know. Um, way less inclined to believe that there's just an, an imminent crash at any given time. Yes, we've seen a lot of volatility, uh, but you know, there's a couple things that we can actually watch out for here. And, and one of those would be uh, bullish divergence, right? And I think we're actually gonna very likely print bullish divergence on the daily again here. Uh, unless, of course, we get a full on crash. If we get a full on crash and we just continue to fall through and we make a new low over here, then bullish divergence is, is out of the question. However, if we find support anywhere above 3,600 in the S&P 500, right? And remember, look at uh, like look at that all of that support. We dipped below this level one time over here, and then we had a deviation down here to put in our low, to put in our bullish divergence on the weekly and on the daily. Uh, but, or was it on the, yeah, we had it on the daily as well. Um, got all this support over here. And so long as we don't come in to make a, a new low and we find support somewhere over here in this region, right above this horizontal level, we will very, very, very likely, almost actually certainly put in bullish divergence on the daily, right? We're already sitting here at, a, at the level that we need to go below in RSI, right? So we're almost positive, we're almost surely going to pop down below it in the next couple of days if we go any further lower but the bet here is that you know the the bullish bet here is that we'll print bullish divergence is if we continue to drop but we don't drop below this resistance if we don't drop below 3700 that gives us a really really nice rebound back upwards i mean also take into account we're coming off of lows right and we saw a 17 and a half percent leg up uh, it wouldn't be too out of the question to see a pullback question is after we bounce right we'll almost certainly get a bounce uh, i would expect like we did over here like we did over here like we we did over here the question is are we going to get another leg down or you know like are, are we going to get boom boom right or are we going to get uh uh this being the correction and then the second leg is back upwards we shall see uh, we did, I believe, lose our 21 week simple moving average. Uh, we held that as support quite a bit. Now we've fallen back down below it. Uh, so what do we want to look for specifically? Now there's no guarantee that we will go back up to test it, but we want to look for a couple of things on the upside. We want to look for that bullish divergence printing, but on the reverse side, right on the on the bearish side we want to look for a hold and it's not guaranteed to happen it doesn't always happen when you cross through the 21 week simple moving average but when it does it's usually a pretty good signal we want to look for a retest and a hold of resistance here so i would i would venture to bet that we will probably retest this 21 week simple moving average in the short term you almost always usually do could we really get into a fear capitulation crash here certainly but again Again, as long as we hold support here, we're going to print bullish divergence on the daily. Again, we saw a breakdown below. That wasn't the time to panic, right? You don't want to sell down here. Well, you, I mean, you could sell down here. And in this case, you were fine. But imagine this would have happened, right? You got left behind. You could have you could have just waited for a, a signal of resistance off of that 21 week simple moving average. 
right? And again, you can get caught up waiting for a signal that's never going to come. But again, we I, I was a big proponent of de-risking at both the 21 week simple moving average. Um, if you tune into these live streams, you know, I said, this is a really good time to take 20% of your positions and risk off or, and move to risk off. Uh, I personally moved some into gold. I moved some into dollars, risked off uh, about 20% in this region, maybe, maybe closer to like 15%, uh, to be honest. But remember, we, we pulled back up into between our 21 week simple moving average. This is risk off time. And now look, it's paying off. Right? It's paying off. We may have an opportunity to buy back lower. Uh, and I know we're spending a lot of time on the S&P 500, but it's, it's kind of the barometer for the market um, right now. Although crypto, crypto holding up significantly better than you'd expect after such a big day. Uh, let me just check real quick. Uh, S P X futures. Uh, yeah. And part of why crypto is probably doing okay is because the futures for S the S P 500 are climbing back over this 21 week simple moving average sitting at around 39 30 so after hours we are actually bouncing back a little bit and getting back above the support so it's giving crypto a little bit of room to run so this is just the futures market for s p 500 that is you know 24 7 i believe um not 24 i don't think it's 24 7 i think it does close on weekends but i think it stays open over into over evenings um don't quote me on that um all right big options s uh expiration tomorrow we're gonna fill that gap all right where's the gap where's the gap where's the gap which gap are you talking about this guy or this guy that is actually a really large gap this is the the gap when we had um, is it the last CPI print. Yeah, the the last CP CPI print that the the one before the the one we just had. Um, so it'd be a, a very large gap to have to fill. Question is, does it count? I don't know if it counts if you have to fill technically to here or to the open. Not to the open, but to the prior close. The close was down here, but can you just fill? I'm not a big, you know, candle fill uh, or gap fill um, analysis person. Um, I think they just have, they fill most of the time by happenstance, um, more so than necessarily having to fill. See, this one actually filled. Funny. That was our, that was the one that we had to fill, and we went up and, and filled it. I suppose um just because like upside upside gaps that are above you are always going to fill because the s p 500 is always in the long run going to continue to make new highs given in a long enough time frame right you, know, you just expect that if the united states is growing and companies are growing over the long term yeah you're gonna have bad bad recessions but over the long term all the gaps to the upside are going to fill and then Occasionally you get a really bad, uh, bad crash and it fills all the other gaps. I think they just fill by happenstance personally. I don't have, um, I don't necessarily think they're destined to fill, but we'll see. We'll see if we fill this gap. Thirty-nine ninety, the higher one. Yeah, pop right back up. Yeah, it'd be great. It'd be great. Pop right back up. I think that'd be I, I, honestly, if if the S and P five hundred does does pop right back up, I'd expect that to be pretty solid for crypto tomorrow. Uh, recovering, you know, recovering so quickly. Okay, uh, let's take a look at some different charts here. Um, Litecoin or Doge, please. Sure. Yeah, Litecoin has just been on uh, on break here, it's dwindling down. Actually, coming close to an entry point. Litecoin was my worst trade of last week. Um, I did go long and get a little bit waxed on it. Uh, ended up getting stopped out, but I used a little bit of a larger position sizing than I.
probably would have liked to um just and in the meantime like a lot of my other positions did fine and you know decent trading week actually overall count is up um just litecoin in particular came down not holding up nearly as well as some other stuff like solana and even ethereum all right so we're just we're just ranging here uh let's uh, we, we got our, our range low we've got our range high right within this very short time frame we can mess around with some of our risk reward levels and see how we're reacting this is going to be very short term yeah so this was a big level big level big level we held here and now we came back down um look for a retest of 74.15 Right, if we pop back up to 74.15 and then get rejected, that's obviously gonna be bearish, could push us back down to the bottom of our range. Now, bottom of our range, um, for multiple reasons, is actually quite uh, a good place to look to go long. From our high here. Okay, that uh, level's all the way down at $68. Um, our long levels, though, should give us fairly clean entry here. There we go. 71.40. And we didn't quite make it. We didn't quite make it. We almost made it. But there's a really, really solid entry point over here and, and a good resistance point over to the left. Let's move our local low all the way back. That's where we get that resistance at 8060. So the top, the, the range that we're currently in has really been carved out by buyers, right? Not necessarily shorters, right? So what I mean by that is the, the leveraged long positions in the market are what's actually been dictating our, 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 our support and resistance ranges. So we'll mark this out to the top side. That's been the top of our range, 8060. And we move this back over and where do those buyers want to start coming back in on 3x leverage why because they can hide their liquidation point down here below 47.60 on 3x leverage right so that's been our range low and i don't know if we'll come back down to tag it but 7140 um, does look pretty attractive for litecoin uh, let's see here and look, look at, I mean, the buyers are really, are really controlling this year. Look how, honestly, I don't, I don't even know if I, we saw that. And that was a really clean ascending triangle. Really nice ascending triangle there. Um, maybe could have drawn it something like that. Ascending triangle um, on, on uh, Litecoin. It doesn't look like we're building one right now, but we are ranging but down. Uh, and I do want to throw on my our risk reward levels because I have a feeling we're coming back down to them. Yeah. So risk reward is sitting there around $70 and that was our prior resistance over here. A little bit of resistance there and there. We bring this back down to our most recent low. Get some pretty good level at 75.65 as well. It's really been our mid-level to our range. Uh, so uh, Litecoin, let's let's structure a trade. We've been doing more uh, specific trade setups. Um, 71.40 is, would be our entry point. Keep a nice tight stop loss there. Um, and then we honestly, I think we could target uh, the above the top of the range i do feel like this price action just in general has been bullish and fundamentally uh, litecoin looks really solid as well uh, but let's throw back on our long margin pressure levels to get our next targets so again we had that like 80 dollars resistance level that would be tp1 uh, and then 95 20 would be T tp2 um, so litecoin uh, long 
stop loss would be down there at around 70 08 what was our other level we had another I think we had another long level down there maybe it, I, I remember a level coming in at 70 I think it might have been a risk reward level to be honest That would have been a risk reward level. We'll do a uh, uh, stop loss at 69.99. Right, bear with me as I get this. There we go. Uh, yes, yeah, 70.10. So if you wanted to drift this stop loss down to 60, 69.99, I think that's fine. Right? I think that's fine. Our, our, our resistance level again was like $80 or so. Let me pull that one right back up. Yeah, 80, 60. So that'd be the top of our range. That's gonna give you 6.55 to one. So nice tight stop loss. Uh, just to the top of the range, it's 80, 60. Stop loss, 69, 99. TP1 would be 80.60. And TP2 would be uh, uh, 95. And we'll show that just one more time. This one, we've had to move the levels around quite a bit, so not ideal. 95.20, that would be TP2. All right, so that'd be our, our, our target one and target two. Um, I feel pretty good about that. Feel pretty good about that. We may not actually get the, the entry here. We may not come all the way back down. Um, we're already starting to fire back up here on this four hour candle, but we'll see what manifests tomorrow. We will, S and P 500 could come in down again, or it could rattle around, um, early tomorrow morning and, or just Litecoin could spill off just a little bit before, uh, before the market opens, we could, we're, we're within spitting distance of 7140. So there's, there's a high chance that we could get the order filled. Um, and regardless, this candle did come down very, very close. 71.70 within 30 cents. All right. Uh, and then the other one that was requested was Dogecoin. All right. From our swing low. Failed to recover 9.4 cents. Did we have that as a short level? Recently, Doge. 9.263 SR flip. 263, yeah. So I don't trade Doge usually, but we did have 9.263 as a SR flip, and that would have actually given a really clean read. Really clean read. We get, did get the wick up here, but it came back down, held it as resistance. Short. go off of this most recent local high yeah so we get quite a bit of resistance here at 10.58 and look i mean doge can really uh, push up to the upside really really quickly so <clears throat> i know it feels i know it feels like it's far away right now but there's you know we get a, a bullish couple of days and elon musk tweets about doge we could easily pop up to 10.5 and fill a short uh, and that's exactly what i'd want to do uh, I don't necessarily want to be long on Doge. Personally, uh, I like I get the thesis, but I, I just I genuinely don't know that um, Elon Musk is going to implement Dogecoin into Twitter. Uh, it would just be very bizarre. I think there's like a, a thousand other features that need to be fixed before before that happens. 
So I think that's further away than what people actually think. But what do I know? And also doing that in a crypto bear market, that's not a good look. That's not a good look. I mean, Tesla's already and in potentially going to recession. I mean, do you want to talk about shaking confidence in SpaceX and Tesla and all his other companies? Um, I, I just don't think it would be a wise move to try to try to push Dogecoin on Twitter users at a time like this. I think that would cheapen the experience quite a bit personally. And if you have if you have big Dogecoin bags, I apologize for um, for that. I don't apologize, but you know what I mean. You know, let's be realistic here. Let's not be let's not be biased, confirmation biased by by the bags we hold. You may really, really want and hope that Elon Musk implements Dogecoin into Twitter, but you do you ask yourself, do you really think that that is what's best for Twitter as an app for, or, and as a business? I personally don't think so. Uh, I think there's way better cryptocurrencies out there than Dogecoin. Uh, but look at our support range. We we recovered this, this um, level. This was a deviation. We bounced around here and then recovered the level. Uh, but we do have support at both of these levels. 827 or 8264 and 7946 uh, with quite a bit of uh, support down here at 7946. But remember, here's the problem with trading Doge is look, look at how well this resistance level held, but you got all these wicks up here, you got all these wicks, right? This support held, but then you had this wick down here. And of course, like that's going to happen with most cryptocurrencies, especially when you're in a big capitulation, a big crash. Um, and that's when FTX went under. So like that's pretty understandable that you're going to overshoot your support levels a, a little bit and then recover them. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're just kind of trickling down here. So I would actually, you know, I, it doesn't. This is a big capitulation. This is not a big capitulation. This is a bleed. And because this is a bleed, I would uh, be more inclined to go long, if I was gonna go long here, on the earlier levels. When you're capitulating, you probably wanna undershoot, go for these these lower levels. So I actually think uh, coming in here and then just you know tapping 8.2 and then looking to take profits pretty early, you know, in some of these resistance levels could be a decent play here, so. Um, Dogecoin, I really, like, I'm just going to put the, the levels in here because I really would not feel inclined to structure a specific trade. 10.3, uh, 9.5, support or uh, key levels at least would be 0 0.8, 0 0.8. Two six four and zero point zero seven nine four four six um, zero point zero. There we go. Eight and ten. So I'm not going to structure a trade on that one. Apologies. Uh, I mean, if you wanted to go long, you do just something like that. Try to swing trade it take profits somewhere where it gives you decent risk reward and then the same thing on the other side. Does Dogecoin have any actual developers that would be needed to integrate one of the largest used apps in the world? Uh, I don't know much about Doge and their development team. I think, I think it's like, uh, open source or something like that, but I'm referencing like a headline I read months and months ago. Uh, so not totally sure on that one. Guys, Donald Trump just dropped an NFT project on Matic today, on Polygon today. NFT volume? Let's, let me go to the Crypto Stackers Discord here. Uh, it's an analytics. This is user activity on for NFTs on Polygon. Look at this. Look at this, guys. It's going parabolic. Wallet activity per week. Selling and buying. 
A lot more buyers for Matic NFTs than sellers. Uh, there's been Matic FUD recently. I mean, there's always FUD about everything. I mean, at the end of the day, some uh, the team. Excuse me. There's like a multi-sig that needs five signatures to basically steal all the funds or to move funds. Um, and four of those signatures are people that are on the Matic team. And then like only one other person would have to from outside of Matic would have to, or Polygon would have to collude. But at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, five people could, could collude to steal billions, but you know, that's, you know, part of the risk you take, first of all, and second of all, you have to ask yourself, are the incentives there? Um, for somebody to do that. And we just saw Sam Bankman Freed and company do that. But it does appear like that was the case from the beginning. It, was, it seemed like that was the intention. The intention from the be beginning seemed to be fraud. I don't know that Polygon has been set up from the beginning um, for fraud. It just it wouldn't wouldn't seem that way. But you never, never know. Uh, all right, accumulation still down here at 63 six, to 65 cents. Um, we may not see that level, but if we do, it's not going to be extraordinarily easy to buy there. It, remember, like if for Polygon to be pushed back down to this level, there's going to be a lot of FUD. Uh, that means probably the rest of the market is panicking and capitulating and probably freaking out about, you know, recession. There's going to be bad news. I mean, for, for Matic to fall out of its range and down to 64 cents, like a 28% crash. Think about what, how uncomfortable that would probably be looking for the rest of the market, right? So it's going to take some, some cojones to, to buy 65 cents. Uh, but I, I mean, I looking at this price action, I don't see any particular reason why, why we can't necessarily come back down to tag this level, right? It'd be a great place or, or, and again, we could fall through it and even go deeper into a bear market. But, um, you know, if this happens, it's like one of those levels that you kind of just got to grit your teeth and buy. You don't have to do anything. It's just I'm kind of speaking to myself here. Um, it's a level that I would grit my teeth and buy at 65, at 65 cents, um, you know, and then, you know, keep a probably keep a stop loss. And if we get a short trigger there, flip short and look to target 47 cents but this would be our like our sr flip range we're probably going to either see that or that and that's the downside otherwise if the rest of the market cooperates we are starting to drift upwards in price we're starting to build that uptrend i could see that continue from attic especially with the trend that we're seeing the trend that we're seeing um, with, with NFTs and usage is, is paints a bullish picture for Matic. It really does. But just know that if the S&P 500 crashes, we're pro, you know, Matic's probably easily coming back down to 65 cents and you need to consider being a buyer there. Uh, so It really depends on how fast we crashed into this level because if we crashed into it extraordinarily fast, like we, you can definitely wick past it. Um, so stop loss would would certainly matter there, but we'd want to potentially long at 65.36 and keep a nice stop loss here at around 60.82. And I know like people are probably thinking like, oh, great, this, this trades, you know, this trade's never going to fill. It may never fill, but if the market starts crashing, we kind of need to have this, you know, conviction already and the trade already mapped out. Uh, stop loss at 0 0.6082. Take profit one would be all the way up at right. 0 0.87 or so take profit would be up here that's gonna give us five to one risk reward give or take a little under five to one 
And we could adjust our stop loss tighter or wider, but I like to keep it relatively tight. Right around there. That gives us almost six to one. Uh, and the short, the short trade. Tight stop loss. That's going to be TP1 right there. Uh, that would be short at 8714. 0.8714 SR flip. Short trigger. Right. So for, for this to confirm, what we need to see is we need to see this pop down below and then come down and hold. Right. Um, and honestly, like what, what this is looking at right now is the actu actually the opposite. What this appears to be is that we've re recovered this range. Right? We've recovered this range. We've come back up above and tagging right to move up higher. A little bit of a bull flag there if you're into that kind of thing. Right, this would have been, this would have been, ooh. This would have been a bit of a short trigger over here. You would have gotten stopped out in profit, right? Long trigger, right? Stopped out in profit, long trigger. Um, still be, you know, in profit here. So it's very choppy to trade the strategy that I personally like to trade, but uh, particularly for Matic here. It's been ranging very tightly for quite a while. Um, all right, so let's kind of finish this up. 76.23. All right, let's... Stop loss would be 0 0.90. Honestly, you could probably keep it tighter than that. 8.95. TP... Uh, P1 would be 76.23, 0 0.7623. And TP2 would be, oh, what would it be? 65, 0 0.654. There we have it. Catching up with the uh, chat here. Yeah, I mean, the Donald Trump news, I mean, I mean it's really crazy. I, I know this is bright. I don't have uh, OpenSea's dark mode on. I don't even know where where it is. Um, we'll check the floor price here. Um, I bought a bunch. Um, not going to lie. I bought a bunch because I do think it's going to be a solid flip. Um, I, you know. I could be wrong here. I could be completely off base. Um, but if he pushes this at all, I think it's like the mint price, right? Of $99 times a max supply of 45,000. That puts the market cap at $4.5 million. That is a very low market cap for most mid tier uh, NFT projects. And that's in a bear market. In a bull market, we were seeing market caps way, 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 way higher than that. And we have to take into account, like this is literally somebody that has, um, you know, among the the most reach of of just about anybody in the in the uh, in the United States. Uh, if he really wants to push these things and pump the floor price, he can do so. He's going to be campaigning for president in 2024. Um, I, you know. You, one of two things is going to happen. Either this is just was a one-time cash grab publicity marketing thing that he got talked into and he's not really into it and he's just not going to ever mention them again. Or his ego is going to come in and he's going to start pumping them. And he's going to be like, you know, trying to get the price up um, and trying to use them as a marketing tool. Oh, you know, Nobody does NFTs better than me. Better believe whatever he says, you know. I'm not going to I can't do a Donald Trump impression. But you know how he is. Um oh, you know, a rare uh trading card I mean, NFT of me just sold for $30,000. What a deal that was. You know, honestly it was too cheap. 
you know you know how he, he, he talks i could absolutely see him pumping these things um and there's a 10 percent royalty on them so the more he pumps them the more money that that he makes as these things are the maga hats for 20 for 2024 he sold 45 million dollars by 2019 I know this because I, I researched it before I bought uh, these NFTs. Um, the guy moves merch. He mo he moves product. Well, you can like him or hate him, but he moves product. He sold a bunch of Mag MAGA hats, $45 million worth by b before the 2020 election. But in, in, this was in 2019. So he's probably sold you know many millions more MAGA hats than $45 million worth at this point um so i mean people he's got like this the massive cult following again it's not political it's uh it's i want to make money off of these things and that's just you know me being completely honest like <laughs> you're gonna start playing around you know you're gonna enter into the nft space enter into the crypto world um you're gonna you know enter your, your or if he's going to enter into the nft and crypto world i mean there's people that that want to make money or really spend uh every every waking moment of you know the last several years of my life have been spent in nfts and crypto so um when there's opportunities to make money off of something like this i'm going to uh going to be taking bets that i think are going to pay off and i think the risk reward here on those nfts are decent to say the least given the market cap so we'll see we'll see i'm not saying ape into them but i do think that it's uh bullish for for matic and uh i do think they're they're gonna end up giving an not it'd be kind of crazy just to see them fall completely flat and just not at least pump one time um once the mint is over all right uh we are straddling the line here for Perp. This is a review of yesterday evening's trade it's setup that we posted. We have not gotten carried this trade over. Uh, all right, so we're developing uh, a nice little portfolio of uh, un uh, unentered trades here, but it does look like Perp could could pump through this. If it does, we want to catch the support on the other side. They now have a, a yield catalyst going live. Honestly, let's just check the volume. Just good old fashioned volume. Hmm. We are we are not seeing more volume come in for perp, despite their you know uh, yield. Despite the yield that they've introduced on their uh, on their exchange volume or on their staking token, so um, see how this develops. If this starts creeping upwards, if this starts creeping upwards and makes support there, we'll look for that long. Um, but again, that's that's our trade setup: SR flip long trigger um, at zero four eight one five zero four eight one five. That's our two x short level. We need to get above that, make support on top of it, and then we could look for a nice um, a nice move here, uh, thirty percent move or so. So keep an eye out. We want to take a peek at PYR. I've not looked at this one in a while. Hmm. Yeah, we've yet to, to sneak up to that uh, resistance level. That would be our short level. Let's also throw on our risk reward levels. PYR was getting kind of pumped in on Twitter and now people have shut up about it, which is interesting. Yeah, a lot of resistance there at 350. Oops, go. I don't trade PYR because I don't believe there's access for it on Bybit. Guys, if you wanna trade derivatives, um, 
I like Bybit. There's a link in the description below. There's some sort of deposit bonus. I don't keep up with the, the what they they change monthly. They do they run different incentives and bonuses and rewards and deposits and whatever whatever. Uh, I don't keep up with it. Um, but you get some sort of better trade fees or something or another. Um, but there's a link in the description if you want to check out Bybit. Uh, okay, so this is where we're holding resistance. We've got this 5x long and this 3 to 1 risk reward level that is coming back in and, and kind of pounding back down the price. If we break above this, we have a lot of resistance to get through, a lot of resistance. Um, so that would be you know a good level to, to, to scalp or to even just look for, for a decent little short position. 350, we'd keep our stop loss somewhere up here honestly this one you might the, just looking at, look at all these wicks here a lot of wicks and pyr a lot of wicks i think personally this is one that you could take the you could take the risk of a wider stop loss here just to and again i personally like to keep really tight stop losses but i'm just looking at the wicks here uh, but I'm also, this is very attractive because of how strong that resistance is and how clean of a range we've had. We've had two touches to the bottom side, two touches to the, the top side. That to me looks uh, very attractive to trade with a, this this tight confluence. So what I'd want to see uh, is this a short, keep a wider stop loss than what I'd normally be comfortable with. Um, we could probably even keep it at like 375. Um, and, and then target the the bottom of the range uh, would be three to three four four. Um, but you could even consider taking a worse risk reward trade here um, at one to one. Eh. Yeah, if you're if you plan to take profits here at at, um, at three twenty five three twenty seven or so, uh, I would tighten that stop loss up. Just you don't want to get in the habit of taking those um, low risk reward trades. Um, but if you want to keep that stop loss wider, you certainly need to be targeting the bottom of the range. That'll give you two to one. And that's going to be more of a swing trade. You know, you enter here and you could potentially come in here and see something like that. Um, shorter term, keep a tighter stop loss. Look to take profits right there. So... I would just back into the stop loss that I want for my risk reward. So there's three to one right there. All right, so PYR short would be 350. We're doing a lot of shorts this evening, more so than usual. Uh, short at 3.50. Um, stop loss would be 358. Take profit would be 3.20 and 3.28 or so. Um, so just a little scalp there. Just a little scalp looking for, for what I drew. You know, looking for that to happen. You could honestly, you could honestly even look for the short here. You could look for that. Again, we've gotten a lot of wicks, gotten a lot of fake outs there. So either have to keep, either kind of have to take keep a wide stop loss. Or what I would prefer to do is just keep a tight stop loss and then get back in if uh, I get confirmation. So you could certainly do something like this and keep it wider than that. It's going to give you 2.4 to 1. Um, however, the way that I'd like to trade this would be for the short right there um, keeping a nice tight stop like that that's going to give you 12 to 1 you're going to get stopped out way more frequently with one of these wicks but then if it pops back down on the uh, I'm not going to switch time frames but if it pops back down and and uh, pops up stops you out gives you one of these there's your trigger to get back in short So I prefer to trade trade like that. Much, much higher risk reward and cut your stops uh, much, much uh, shorter. Again, I talked about this last night. My win rate for the last 30 days trading was 
because I keep those tight stop losses. I get stopped out a lot, but when I when I get a winning trade, it's like this, and it makes up for for the, all those times I get stopped out and lose. You know, again, one percent position sizings like. 0.2%, 0.1%, 0.3%. Yeah, those losing trades add up, but at the same time, um, you catch you catch a winner without having to get stopped out at you know for your, the entirety of your of your trade. So usually works out better for me at least. All right, guys, um, as always, it is a pleasure. If you're new to the stream, go check out crypto or if you're not new to the stream and you just haven't um, checked it out yet, go to CryptoStackers.pro. Come join the Smart Money Discord, guys. It is the least expensive paid Discord out there with the best value. The value uh, in alpha compared to the cost, the ratio is out of this world. Um, nine dollars a month to to get involved and stay involved in crypto and get access to a really smart intelligent community that is in crypto uh for the long haul and is making currently making money in crypto guys uh i love to see the wins channel in the discord people absolutely crushing it 111 percent on ethereum here um chinese mafia 15.1 thousand dollars on that short beautiful um I only share that because they shared that screenshot. They seem to be comfortable with that. Um, I, you know, I personally prefer to operate under percentages. Um, a lot of people get killed in crypto. Um, and apologies if uh, if I shouldn't have shared that on live stream. But uh, absolutely crushing it in the Crypto Stackers Pro Discord with this volatility this week. Um, so really glad to see that. Um, it's been a good trading week for me. Uh, I, could have had things go better. I uh, could have certainly, you know, there are certainly some missed opportunities, especially shorting um, Ethereum at 1340 and, and not pulling the trigger on that. I did get into the Bitcoin short, which I closed, and that was a really nice textbook profitable trade for me. Um, didn't get too greedy, and now I'm back in a Ethereum long. And I'm very comfortable with that. So, and a nice Solana long that, that's in profit. So, actually really really solid uh you know textbook week when everything went as good as i could have hoped personally from a trading perspective um minus the one missed opportunity shorting eth at 1340 it's going to happen and then um had the hiccup with litecoin uh and ended up getting stopped out of the loss is what it is um, but overall a positive on the week and uh excited to trade moving into next week and we're going to be back at it 10 p.m eastern time every single night if you want access to the indicators that we use for these trade setups and for finding support and resistance levels uh cryptostackers.pro 399 once and that also gives you lifetime access to the smart money discord uh, and then if you'd like to join the mastermind group we meet wednesdays at 5 p.m eastern time every single week and the way I was describing this yesterday, because we had such a good a good session yesterday, um, uh, we have a weekly town hall meeting, and it's simply it's it's like imagine you had a bunch of friends who are really really into crypto and like talking about crypto and like talking about all the news and discussing uh, discussing alpha, discussing what's you know you know theories as to what's going to happen uh, next, you know, kind of playing things out. Um, it's kind of like a almost like a war room trying to figure out what's going to happen next and, and uh really just s stretch the crypto muscles uh in a really really positive way and stay uh stay involved in crypto hold yourself accountable uh, but it is a really really good productive group that uh as i found that has been helping me a lot just to get other opinions too um from people who are crypto educated and people who are really into crypto so if you're really into crypto and you want to join a group where we talk about crypto once a week and we also have the the um, chat channels and whatnot and i'm also working on a video investing course that'll be available to all members um and that'll be coming out in january um, so 
very excited for that but check that out that's the mastermind group cryptostackers.bro and last but not least check out the link in the description below if you'd like to sign up for a bybit account and get trading derivatives um that's just means you know, on leverage using leverage to trade uh thanks so much for tuning in guys we'll catch you tomorrow peace same time